in the equilibrium reaction. So you react an acid plus an alcohol, make an ester plus water. Is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? Okay, so if you didn't know, and you had to guess, what should you guess? Yeah, I guess that's exothermic. So this reaction actually is exothermic. So if you increase the temperature, how is that going to affect this reaction? Yeah, so the reaction will go faster. Is it going to increase the yield of product? No. No. Okay, so anyway, since this is an equilibrium reaction, by increasing the temperature, heat is a product. That's going to shift the reaction back toward the reactant side, which is going to lower the yield of product. Now, should an excess of one reactant be used? And if so, which reactant should be the excess of reactant? So if we use, say, an excess of alcohol, is that going to shift this equilibrium reaction in one direction or the other? Yeah, so if we use, say, an excess of alcohol, that should shift the reaction toward the product side. And should that increase the yield? Yeah, that should increase the yield. So if you increase either one of them, or it has to be the one that's in? Oh, see, that, that depends. Because uh, you're right. It sort of depends on, see, in this case here, does it matter which one is the excess reactant? In other words, does it matter which, which substance, does it matter which substance is the limiting reactant? That is, which substance is the substance you want to completely react? Okay, so we look at that reaction. Okay, so if you have, for example, let's say you have ethanol plus an acetic acid to produce our products. What was the bond that breaks in the ethanol? Was it the carbon oxygen bond or the oxygen hydrogen bond? Yes, yeah, so this is the bond that breaks it. What was the bond that breaks in the acid? Yes, yeah, so this bond breaks there. So note that the OH combined with the H to form water. And then this part here combines with this fragment to form the, to form the ester. So is there one reactant we want to be the limiting reactant or does it matter? So if the acid is the limiting reactant and we use an excess of alcohol, will that help us make more ester? Yes, it actually doesn't really matter which one is the <coughs> excess reactant. There's some, react there's some reaction where it does matter whether which reactant is the limiting reactant and which one is the excess reactant. So in this case here, it actually doesn't matter. Okay, so how can the yield be increased? So can we increase the yield by raising the temperature? No. Can we increase the yield by using excess of either the acid or alcohol? Yes. Yeah, we can increase the yield. How else can we increase the yield? Yeah, we can decrease temperature. Now, this is the this is the thing we have to balance. By decreasing the temperature, we decrease the rate, which means the reaction goes slower. But if we decrease the temperature, what can we use besides temperature to increase the rate? Yeah, we can use a catalyst. So that's why we often use a catalyst to increase the reaction rate. Because since most reactions are exothermic, by if you use a high temperature, that's <coughs> lower the yield of product, which we don't want to happen. Okay, so there's always, there's always going to be some optimum temperature to use in a reaction to, so we don't slow down the reaction rate so much that it's too slow. Now, what does the sulfuric acid catalyst do? Yeah, speed to rate. Does that affect the yield of product? Okay, so we'll do a few more examples of this. This is the last one we'll do today. So in today's lab, you're going to do five different, you're going to look at five different equilibrium reactions. You're going to figure out a way to make the reaction go in the forward direction and then make the reaction go 
backwards in the reverse direction. Okay, so one of them is, is dissolving salt in water. The dissolution of salt in water is endothermic, so heat is considered a reactant. Okay, so let's write a chemical equation that represents this reaction. So if we do that, how can we re represent the dissolution of salt in water? Okay, so for reactants, we can say we have NaCl solid. And that's going to form Na plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. Now note that water, see the AQ means that there's water present. So what we could also do, we could put water as a reactant okay, because the water is involved in the AQ part here. And then since this reaction is endothermic, where do we put the heat? Yeah, so the heat's going to be considered a reactant. So the question is, how can we get more salt to dissolve the water? So if we want more salt to dissolve, are we shifting the reaction toward the product side or toward the reactant side? Uh, toward the product side. So based on let's say the H principle, how can we shift the reaction toward the uh, product side? Add heat. Yeah, so we can add heat. That means we're going to raise the temperature. So using hot water should make more salt dissolve. What's the, another way to make more salt dissolve? More. Yeah, add more. Yeah, add more water. What's the other way to make more salt dissolve? Add more heat. Oh, you said that. <laughs> so we can add more heat, add more water, or add more salt. What's the, what can we do to make the reaction go in the reverse direction? So if we have a salt water solution, and we want to get salt, solid salt, out of that salt water solution, what's one way we can do that? Boil the water, decrease We can boil off the water, which means that we want to remove the water. Okay, so by removing water, that makes just the reaction toward the reactant. And note that if you boil it, you're actually increasing heat and removing water at the same time. Okay, so by increasing the temperature, that shifts the reaction toward the product side, but by removing water, that shifts the reaction back toward the reactant side. What's another way to shift the reaction back toward the reactant side? <coughs> yeah, we can add some sodium ion or chloride ion to see if that works. Okay, so you can try any of those methods to make the reaction go in the forward direction and then also back in the reverse direction. So we look at this reaction for the reactions. Okay, and I think that's yeah, so we'll look at this one after your exam. How should you handle this? Okay, so let's take a look at some. Um, let's take a look at an old exam. Let's see. Uh, now let's see which one is on. Let's see. Now Alex has been going over the the spring 2011 quizzes. And I think on the Chem 1B website, I've got quizzes from, uh, from let's see, from uh, 2006. Did we go over 10? Did we go over 2006? Yeah, that was the one on the most recent one on the website. Do you have a newer one than that? Like in 2010 or? Yeah, I've got 2010. I like the one that I yeah, there's 2012 up there, but. Yeah, that was pretty good. Cool. We are going to do 2006 to 2010. Whatever's on the website. Okay, so here's the 2006. Exam, so let me make this. 
Okay, so this first question, agree or disagree with the following statements? Now, these on the question on the exams are not going to be, you know, define this term or that term. Uh, so most of the questions are going to be some sort of word problem in which you'll be asked to apply the concepts we learned in Chem 1B to some sort of problem. Okay, so when you do these word problems, try to identify what concept is involved. So in question one, it says sugar is used to preserve homemade jam and jelly by killing bacteria that may cause botulism. The sugar concentration used to preserve the jam should be lower than the sugar concentration inside bacteria cells to allow water to pass out of the cell and collapse the cell. So what word or words gives you a clue about the chemistry concept involved in question 1A? Water. Water. Okay, so water and passes. Concentration, so what concept is involved in question 1A? So, does it have to do with uh, intermolecular forces? Does it have to do with reaction rates? Is a colligative property involved? Yes. Which colligative property? Osmotic pressure. Yes, that's to do with osmotic pressure or osmosis. So how would you answer that question then? Would you agree or disagree with that statement? Because it says here, the sugar concentration used to preserve the jam should be lower than the sugar concentration inside bacteria cells to allow water to pass out of the cell and to collapse the cell. So if we have a picture of our cell here. Has anyone made jam before? No. See, the problem is it's too easy to buy stuff in this thing. Okay, so this is our cell. And does anyone know what the sugar concentration inside the cell is? Is it like uh, I know salt is like 0.9%, is it like 2% or something? I can't remember, whatever it is. Some concentration of sugar. Okay, then outside the cell, here's our jam. <laughs> we have sugar in here too. So we'll call this sugar one and sugar two. So if we want water to pass out of the cell, should the sugar concentration in the cell be a greater or less than the sugar concentration outside the cell? Okay, because it says here, we want the water to pass from the inside to the outside. So we want this sugar concentration to be greater than this sugar concentration, or the other way around. So we want the sugar concentration to be higher outside than the than inside? Okay, so would you agree or disagree with that statement then? You would disagree. Disagree? So the sugar concentration should be lower than the sugar concentration should be, so it should be higher. Part B, salicylic acid reaction, sodium hydroxide to form water and sodium salicylate, the salicylic, let's see, salicylic acid, are soluble in water due to the same chemical forces. Okay, so you have sodium salicylate and salicylic acid.
Is there enough information on the is there enough information given on that question to answer this question? Or do you need to know something about salicylic acid and sodium salicylate? In a structure, or you could also look at the chemical formula. So the chemical formula of salicylic acid, we looked at that in a few minutes ago. This C7 H6O3. Now sodium salicylate, does anyone know what the structure of or formula of sodium salicylate is? Okay, so salicylic acid, this is an acid. That looks like this. Now, since salicylic acid is an acid, what do acids do? It gives up a, a proton. Which proton in salicylic acid is given up? Okay, so which H is going to be this H, one of the H's on the ring, or this H? It should be this one. Okay, so this is the H which is given up. So note that in organic compound, the H which is donated is the one on